Anyway, little remains to be said about my broken self. It's uh, 1707. But as I said before we began, this is the maid's tale. So I would like to take this opportunity to elaborate on events I was unable to show you before. That is, if you can bear listening to such a dismal, miserable story. Right back to the beast. Beast time! I already told you of my meeting with the beast, so I will begin the second tale from here. After Bestia slaughtered the merchant who showed up at the mansion, his mad laughter echoing through the halls. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? Did you hear his screams? He said I was a monster. <laughs> a mutilated body lay sprawled sprawl across the living room floor. As you can imagine, that was my first time ever seeing such a bloody mangled corpse. I could not look directly at it, so I averted my eyes. Hey, hey, you saw it. I just proved that beasts are stronger than humans. Indeed you did. Ah, I know, I've got a great idea. You asked if I wanted to become the master, and I said I did. Which means you work for me, isn't that right? So you do whatever I tell you to do, won't you? What would you have me do? Chop up his arms and legs and make a stew out of them. And don't you hesitate, or you'll end up like him. I mean, well technically, Master, I can't die. If you try to chop me up, it wouldn't work, but oh well. Yes, Master. Yeah, we could probably torture her though, so may maybe she'll she's trying to avoid that at least. <laughs> He's trying to assert his total dominance over me. That's not proper behavior for the Master, although I am the one who offered him the role. Do it. He's an utterly mad beast. But I, am I really all that different? Ah, there's blood all over my hands. It sounds like someone's laughing. Is it him, or is it her? No matter what happens, it won't affect me. The cocoon is not the real me. I was looking down what could only be described as a pile of human debris. I had done this, but the fact did not register with me. I felt nothing at all. Not regret, not anger. No sorrow or despair. Put it on the fire. He said he traded in spices. I should give him a very unique flavor. How am I supposed to work with this? I was quite simply puzzled. No one ever made such a request of me in my hundreds of years in the mansion. That's all I was, puzzled. But he interpreted it as hesitation or fear. So he grabbed me by the shoulder, knocked me to the floor, and, I, and skewed me with that curious blade of his. For the first few moments, he wore that deranged grin of his, but as the seconds passed, he slowly transformed into shock. Then a drop of blood spilled from my breast, and the instant he realized it, I saw revulsion in his eyes. Him, of all people. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, it's ironic, isn't it? A man who cackled as he slaughtered others was disgusted by a mere maid. It was absurd. So much so, I almost wanted to cry. <laughs> you. Is that all, Master? Are you not going to dismember me? You could try stabbing my face, or my neck, or my stomach, or any other part of me. Maybe then I might die. Oh, now, don't look at me like I'm some exotic creature. <laughs> Stop that. Quit laughing. I should have. My only distinctive feature is my smile. I have nothing else. My hands are covered in blood, but I can still smile. <laughs> It's ridiculous. I get it now. You're the witch, aren't you? Ah, I see. Only monsters ever had a place here. Every so often, I hear a woman's voice in my head. That's you, isn't it? You're the witch. Monster? Witch? Maid? What am I? Who is Giselle? Michelle says she was spirited, true to herself. But she often laughed and cried and shouted. But I don't know anyone like that. I'm just a maid. Nothing more than a servant. 
The woman's voice he had said he heard was probably the real, the real witches, but I had no interest in that. I would have preferred not having to think about anything at all. Nothing would cause me to waver. My head was empty. Ah yes, head empty, thoughts zero, you know. A world without joy or sorrow sounds quite wonderful, but nothing ever went the way I planned. But the white-haired girl, whom I thought I would never see again, appeared before me once more. I was quite nearly in a panic. Beneath my perfectly practiced smile was a veritable storm of emotions. Faint hope flared up within my shell. Perhaps this time, Michelle would remember me. It's like rolling in a catcher game, you know? It's like a very small percentage that Michelle will remember. That would roll the correct Michelle SSR, but it never works out. But that hope was unsurprisingly in vain. Is someone there? Yes. I came by to ask if there was anything you needed. I cannot offer you anything extravagant, not like before, but I'm here to pr provide you with in my capacity. I appreciate the offer, but I need nothing. Being allowed to stay the night is more than enough. Do you work here in the mansion? Yes, indeed I do. I have been here for a very, very long time. A very long time? Um, you might think this is not question, but have we met before? Something about you seems familiar. But I get the feeling I've been in this mansion before. Yes, we have met. It was quite some time ago, though. When was it? I, um... It was an unimaginably long time ago. Do you remember a boy and a girl with flaxen hair? Flaxen hair. I apologize. My memory fails me. Do you not remember me either? I was afraid of this. She doesn't remember anything this time either. But I would not be so pushy this time. I cannot bear to be so blatantly rejected again. I see. You should probably not push yourself to remember that. There were joyous times, and there were less than joyous times. But would you be so kind as to answer one question? What might your name be? My name? My name is... Michelle. White hair, red eyes, and the name Michelle. Why must you continue to bring me pain? Why can you not set me free as you were supposed to? I see. So you are Michelle again. Again? You should get some rest. I will make tea for you in the morning. Also. Go on, close your eyes. The white-haired girl lay so quietly in her bed I could not tell whether she was asleep or awake. Even the sound of her breathing was too faint to hear. Standing over her, looking down at her, the locked away despair and wails of lamentation I thought myself no longer capable of came bubbling back to the surface. But can you honestly blame me? I have been waiting for Michelle for so long. She was the one thing holding me up. It was the only thing keeping my broken self from falling apart completely. Did she claim not to remember me? Did you pity her? having to go through tragedy after tragedy. But every time she showed up, she says she did not know me, bringing me more and more grief. I've been waiting for hundreds of years, waiting for her for so long, my mind slipping away every passing day, waiting and waiting and waiting. Ah, my apologies. I have to be careful, or I'll slip back to where I was then. If you're in here holding my hand now, I... Tell me, you are Michelle, aren't you? That's a relief to hear. Yes, thank you. I'm all right. Do you think I'm as muddled as I feel? Let us return to the tale, then. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know how much it hurts. For someone you waited for so long for, to say they don't know you. You have no idea how much it crushes me. Rather than feel like this anymore, maybe I should just end it all with my own hands. I reach out my hands toward her slender neck. I was not an especially strong woman, but I thought even I would be able to suffocate her relative ease. She was blind at that, so she wouldn't be able to run. <sighs> However, <sighs> that was the one thing I could not bring myself to do. I can't. 
Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. I get. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Sometimes I quote that. By the way, I don't know if I'm doing a, a good impression, but there was a scene in Metal Gear Solid where basically Snake was aiming at something, and then he says, "I can't do it." You know. So that's the context of why sometimes I say that. I say it like that anyway. I can't do it. Um. What, what, what else do you say? I can't do it, and also he says like, um. I don't know. I don't know. I think he says something else, but I can't remember what he also says. Like, uh, you know, impossible, maybe. No way. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway. I ran and I ran and I ran, though I knew I had nowhere to run, plunging myself into the mansion's darkness. I did not want to be there any longer. I did not want to have anything to do with her. But being an inhuman inhabitant of the house, I could not close my eyes or lock my ears to what happened within its walls as much as I may have wanted to. It didn't matter where I was. I had no say in the matter. I was forced to observe the events until their tragic conclusion. Twisted bloody madness. The wretched wails creating a whirlwind of misery. When it was all over, Morgana cackled like a little girl. Well, the game was last for me. Go on, you have a laugh too, my dear. There's nothing in the world better than this. He was a beast through and through. And what a fool he was to think he could become human. Ah, I love it. I always love a happy ending. No, anyway. He destroyed everything he had in his own hands. And I couldn't even manage to mourn for it. What the unfortunate fate, would you say? <laughs> Go on and laugh with me. Laugh with me, my darling, devoted Giselle. Michelle's dead too, though. You were worried about that tiny little detail. She'll show up again, of course. So you don't need to worry about a thing. You don't need to feel bad about any of this carnage. Rest easy, my darling, devoted Giselle. If you say so, then I should not be concerned. <laughs> yes, that's good. Laugh. Laugh, my dear. <laughs> Everybody laugh. Hello, well. Laughing out loud. All right. All the way to 1863. Back to the smoke filled skies and, uh, you know. Child exploitation for labor. <laughs> I apologize for making you listen to my dreadful stories for so long. You must be quite wary of them by now. But worry not, for this is the final one. And despite being the end, it is neither dramatic nor exciting. It was a single phrase, the most insignificant of things, that caused me to completely lose myself and forget I had long ago been the woman called Giselle. There is no malice in it. It was but a simple greeting. Do you remember how, the first time she arrived, Michelle said I had a peculiar presence about me? She felt some there, something there between us. And the second time, she said something about me seem, about me seem familiar. She did not remember why, but her soul recognized the bonds we shared. So I assumed the next time she showed up, she would feel something even stronger, or perhaps even have her memories. Despite having been let down again and again, I still held on to the faintest glimmer of hope. But when she appeared, she was someone else's wife. Oh no, NTR. But then again, well that kinda of that kinda of happens anyway in all of the stories, so uh it's not anything different. But maybe marriage has a bigger meaning to uh I don't know, maybe it has a bigger meaning to the maid because she lived in a time where it's uh, you know, it's a holy matrimony, right? It's symbolic of something else. Anyway. Hey, hey, headmaid. Get out of here. I'm right here, sir. Is something the matter? I figured you should get to know her as soon as possible, since you'll be spending a lot of time looking after her. Hey, get out of here. Christ, there's not a goddamn confident bone in your body, is there? Uh, I'm sorry. I'll be right out. The first thing she said when she saw me was, It's a pleasure to meet you. 
It's a pleasure to meet you. What had I spent all that time waiting for? It was all for naught. It was all meaningless. In this era, she felt nothing at all for me. In retrospect, it makes enough sense. But for me at the time, that was the end. Yurishiku Kino. Konnichiwa. Mugana. Mugana. Pass me into darkness. Make me a formless being like you. I don't want to be here another second. I don't want to look at her ever again. Ever again. Morgana. Morgana. Please listen to me. I'm begging you. Now, now. What's the matter, my dear? It's not like you to throw a tantrum. I can't take it anymore. I can't do this. I shall again. Oh, you poor thing. Betray three times now. Morgana. You pitiful girl. Don't groan like you're having a bad dream, my dear. I'm here for you. Please, Morgana. Erase me from existence. If you go away, then I'll be alone. That would be absolutely dreadful. But I... I... Tell me. What torments you so, my dear? What? Michelle, whom I've been waiting for on for so long doesn't... Oh, you poor thing. You spent so long riding the currents of time that you've lost sight of yourself? What? You've convinced yourself that someone else's story is your own. Someone else's? Yes, indeed. It was such a beautifully tragic tale you fell in love with. It resonated so deeply with you that you felt their pain as if it were your own. What are you talking about? I wanted to tell you, my dear, but you were so convinced it actually happened to you that I couldn't bring myself to take it away. Then, what about Michelle? She is not the one you're waiting for. And you are not hers either. And what about yourself? That is not your name. Then who am I? Who are you? <laughs> That's a very silly question. You are this mansion's cursed witch. I'm the witch? That you are. You're both the maid and the witch. But how? Do you truly believe that someone has eternal life? Who doesn't bleed when they're cut? And who can smile no matter what happens or is in a witch? How much of this Giselle's memories do you actually possess, my dear? How clearly can you remember her life? You can't, can you? You don't know what kind of story Giselle and Michelle wove. And you wouldn't because you are merely an onlooker. Much like you are now for this present tale. And by contrast, how much of the witch's story do you know? You should know it very well. Yes, but that's because you... No, my telling it to you is not the reason. The details are really deep within your memory. And I'm... That's right. You are the cursed witch Morgana. But you... I am you. You split into two because you refused to accept who you were. Think about it. Have I ever shown myself to you? Have I ever shown myself to anybody? That's why. I am... I'm the witch? That you are. <laughs> I see. It all makes sense now. Ah, everything has fallen into place. There's one thing I still don't understand, though. This story I was so enamored with, yourselves and Michelle's story. What kind of story was it? <laughs> I would be glad to tell you. You look like you're ready to know the truth. Okay. It's a weird troll where she tricks her into thinking she's Morgana, I guess, and that was the fourth story that was told to us, I guess. I believed every word she said. All my worries melted away like they were nothing. The sight of the white-haired girl no longer kicked up waves in my heart. In fact, I found myself wishing for her to find happiness. I was an observer, watching and hoping for the best. The tragedy that befell her did sadden me, but I felt bad for her like I would a character in a story. You don't say, as I read this visual novel. Spin, 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 around and around. Alright. I brought you your medicine, Master. Thank you. Set it down over there. Yes? What are you staring at? My apologies. I was simply musing about how much time has passed. I can hardly 
believe it's been 40 years since you were a bright young businessman. And you haven't aged a day. Why, thank you. <laughs> I am a witch after all. Well, I don't care much. I don't much care what you are. You could be the Grim Reaper for all I care. You still work harder than anyone else. May I ask you a question, Master? What is it? Why have you not returned to your homeland? I thought it was a place quite dear to you. I can't wait for her back there. Do you still believe she will return? To a degree, I understand how difficult it can be to wait. But for me, waiting now brings more joy than pain. If you're a lifespan master, it'll be a pain that will be the pain that wins out. Perhaps, perhaps you should consider letting go. Tell me, was her name really Michelle? Why, yes, it most certainly was. But why would you ask such a thing? Have you forgotten your own wife's name? You have waited so long that it would seem like me. Some part of you has begun to break down. You poor, poor man. You know, you look a whole lot more pitiful than me. My. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I guess that's, uh, that's the aftermath of Jacob's story. Oh, there you are. What has you in such a flurry, my dear? You are a noble servant. You must maintain your composure at all times. But the, the master. What about him? He was found deceased in his chambers. The doctor just came out. He said it was his ailment. And it would seem the master knew his time was short. For he left the will, asking not to be given a funeral. I see. I feel kind of bad for him, though. Not only did he not have anyone at his side for his final moments, he didn't want to be sent off at all. Isn't that sad? It is for the best. There's not a single soul in his world left who could send him off. With your era drawn to an end, this mansion will soon return to existing nowhere in this world. I wonder what the next one will look like. I wonder if misfortune will befall her once more. That'll be quite regrettable. Perhaps if I could convince her of her tragic fate, she'd be willing to disappear from this realm with me. And if she wishes to fight that fate, perhaps she will become my next master. Calling her master seems inappropriate, but I cannot think of a word that fits better. <laughs> I eagerly wait the next era. Please, do not keep me waiting for long, master. Okay, so that's her decision, I guess. That kicked off the beginning of the game, actually, you know? That she decided to, like, show, you know, all the stories and everything for the white-haired girl, I guess. Or, well, Michelle. It's confusing, though, because there's Michelle with the feminine Michelle. There's also the male Michelle. Anyway. Time press onward. And then, at long last, you arrive. Yep. There we are. A chair. I guess, I don't know. Oh, splendid. You've finally awoken. You're finally, you're finally awake. Skyrim. No, um, I've simply been waiting so long for this moment. Ending the mansion all by my lonesome, ensuring I was ready for your return, Master, whenever that time may be. When I caught sight of you through the window and my heart fluttered, the time had finally arrived. Oh my, you do not know who I am. Do you not know who you, you are either? That's quite the predicament. How about this? I am a servant of this mansion, and as such, I am familiar with the many incidents that have taken place here. I shall show you the history of this house, Master. Let us be off, then, and fear not. I merely entreat you not to let go of my hand. Did you hold it tightly? You need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. I was wondering, like, why were we like, nothing, you know? We are but a shadow, I guess. No matter what happens, no matter what you see, never again let go of this hand. That is everything. I prepared a number of things to say when she finished with her tale, but I can't manage to put any of them into words. I almost hate myself for thinking it would be so easy. But letting myself hope I could simply pull her back to her old self, accept whatever had happened to her, take her hand in mine, and that would solve everything. The truth is so much worse than I imagined, so much more harrowing. 
she was subjected not only to her own terrible fate, but every single one of this house's tragedies. The tales she told me are things she witnessed with her own eyes. How can I possibly blame her for forgetting me, or forgetting herself, after so many hundreds of years? No, I should be. Why? Why did you come for me? Why could I return before she was gone so far? Uh, so far gone. Why? Why did you show up now, Giselle? Because you opened the door to my memories. I now remember everything, but I didn't want to remember. I didn't want to be reminded of all those empty years, of all the people who passed on, leaving me behind, of you who refused to show up no matter how much I begged. I'm not the Giselle you knew anymore. I may have my memories, but I cannot go back to that time. My hands are stained with blood, my soul worn thin. The girl who had laughed at the simplest things, who would tell silly jokes and wasn't afraid to speak her mind, doesn't exist anymore. That Giselle is dead. How can you say I am the same girl? How can you say I feel the same way I did? How can you be sure that even now, I still love you? Can you deny the possibility that I no longer yearn for you, the white-haired girl? Can you deny the possibility that my love for you has transformed into hate? She brings her hand up toward my throat, and I make no attempt to move out or away. When her fingers brush against my skin, they feel as frigid as death itself, or colder than anything I felt from her thus far. If she were to wrap her hands around my neck, she wouldn't even have to squeeze to stop me from breathing. And that is the fork in our road. One word will decide everything. I don't have much time. I have to say something before the cold robs me in my voice. Oh, yet it, oh okay. I was gonna say, yet again we have a choice? But no, we don't. Really? Uh, uh oh. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. I wasn't wanting to save. But the game, the game did not let me say anything. That means I have to restart from the the, the save data if I want to go back to this decision. Oh my god. I was gonna say, you know, it, it might be a decision. It didn't seem like it was. It was just like a simple choice. I was going to save the game there, but actually, that had a time limit. The heck? I will see what happens though. I wanted to, to deny it. She may have forgotten me, but. What she felt still remains, as evidenced by her attraction to the white-haired girl who had many physical similarities to me. Her feelings are still there. I sincerely, sincerely believe that. But her arctic gaze caused me to waver for the briefest moment. Perhaps I only wanted to deny it for my own selfish reasons. It was only a few short seconds, but those seconds decided it all. Farewell, Michelle. She slides her slender fingers down my neck that gently shells me back. Giselle. I'm falling, sinking into my own darkness. I reach my hand out, but I cannot grasp anything. Her hand, the hand I held for all this time, is so far away. I try to shout, but nothing comes out. I can neither answer her original question, nor say her name. Down and down, into the infinite void. Darkness consumes everything. My voice, my hands, my very being and her gaze. My consciousness slips away. Why? Why did I hesitate? I was Because I was going to save the game there. The game really tricked me though. Usually in every visual novel before a choice, you save the game, right? But... <laughs> Oops. I wish I could have at least told you that I still loved you, even if you did not love me. Well, I assume that's an ending. Uh, there's more though. Hmm. It's like, I don't know, that was a choice, right? I could have, I could have clicked on it, but it wasn't, you know, I hesitated. In the story and also in real life. Are you sure you really want to let him go? Yes, I am sure. I see. I don't think I'll ever understand. If you hate someone, you should chain them down and torture them for all eternity. It was the perfect opportunity to trap his soul. I 
do not hate him. Oh, is that so, my dear? Everything you said, I simply assumed. I could never come to hate him. I n could never want him to want to see him dead or tortured. Oh uh ho! -huh. Then why did you say what you did? I don't think you would understand. Probably not. I'm not particularly interested in understanding either. It doesn't matter what happened in the interim. In the end, nothing's changed, has it, my dear? You are still my darling devoted maid. With enough time, you will once more forget your name. <laughs> what a wonderful world this is. Oh, it's not a very good ending. There you go. Ending four. Moment of hesitation. Oh, I feel the game is insulting me. Like, like saying, haha, you hesitated. Get wrecked, dummy. Who wrote this game? Was it Morgana? I imagine Morgana made this game. You know? <laughs> anyway, you literally, you literally trolled me. Let's try again. We have to we have to skip a whole bunch though. Let's see. Uh, this time, let's not uh, hesitate. We gotta click on it. It turns out it was a quick time event. You know? I don't know if it's a, the, 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 the very first time it's ever happened, but definitely in recent memory anyway. This is quite unique, you know, having like a time-based decision in a visual novel. I mean, it's been done before in other like, I guess, choice-driven games, but definitely like, for me anyway, like a visual novel, like, you have to click on the thing, otherwise you don't make a decision. Definitely, uh, never seen that before. Specifically in the visual novel, maybe. I'm trying to think. Maybe, well, maybe. I mean, it depends. I don't know. Maybe something similar has happened before in the visual novels I played. Not sure. But definitely quite a, quite a curveball, you know, quite a curveball. <laughs> anyway, literally not enough. I'm trying to say, okay, don't hesitate. It, Michelle wasn't kidding when he said he didn't have much time. To decide, but uh, of course, of course, I'll deny it. While I was floating in the darkness, I heard a voice. Regrettably, it took me far too long to realize that it was your voice, crying for help, calling for me. You may have lost hold on your old self, but somewhere deep down, you kept calling for me, which is how I found my way here. I refuse to believe that isn't real. I refuse to stomp on a love that survived for hundreds of years. By all means hate me. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I don't care if you spit bile at me for the rest of eternity. I will not let go of this hand. Because you asked me not to. I could kill you right now. If that's what you want, then go right ahead. But I'll fight you with all I've got. Giselle, I've missed you too much to lose you again. I don't care if it makes you despise me. I don't care if you think I'm being inconsiderate. I want to save you. But I... I'm not the Giselle you once knew. I'm an abomination. My mind and body are twisted beyond recognition. I don't know. Again, being immortal is not too bad. <laughs> I'm a disgusting monster. The woman you fell in love with does not exist anymore. Just forget about me. You are the one who should be saved. Set free from me. You look the same to me. Your manner of speaking, your temperament, your physical appearance may have all changed, but you're still the same just so I love. And, you know, you look fine, really. Is like, unless you were, like, literally a, a weird, like, tentacle monster, then maybe I will reconsider, but you're still, you know, humanoid and everything, and still, like, uh, <laughs> bishoujo, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. You should never have done anything for a foolish girl like me. You gave your life to save mine. I hated you for that. I never once considered how you felt with those knights pointing their blades at you, or what drove you to allow me to live. I should have, but I didn't. I was the one who trusted the witch, and yet I complained when you never showed up. I unf unfairly resented you for it. I am a horribly self-centered person. You will be so much better off. 
with someone pure and unburdened with all this nasty suspicion and doubt and animosity. He would so, be so much happier with someone like her. Giselle, you've been paying attention, haven't you? You were there for all the tales I told you. Everything that's happened up to this moment. So you should know just how loathsome a woman I am. Too weak to even keep herself together. No, Giselle. I'm nothing compared to her. Giselle. Ugh. See? You haven't changed one bit. You still get louder and louder the more you lose your temper. I. Why do you feel the need to compare yourself to her? Because she's a better match for you. On Tinder. Anyway, it's Giselle. Tinder sucks. It's a, it's a bad dating app. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. I'm so sorry for keeping you waiting. I want you to believe me when I say that I dearly missed you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted you back, and that has not changed. Hey, believe me. I love you. Ah. Uh, I... I miss you so much, too. Hug? Do we hug? Maybe we hug. Oh, we don't, we don't want to get a CG for her. I was hoping for a CG. Uh, she leaps into my arms, and she's just, as, she's just as cold as ever. Her wharf deprived body feels like the embodiment of all my mistakes. I wrap my arms around her, and I'm immediately filled with unparalleled relief. Even as she sobs in my chest, her body cold as ice. And then... The darkness parts. We are once more at the top of the observation tower. It's still shrouded in the miasma of shadows, but we're back in the mansion now. We have emerged from the darkness in our hearts. Shell. Yes? I'm sorry. But what? I never should have erased you from my memories. Yours are the memories I needed to hold on to Titus. I was so glad to hear you say you still love me, even after learning the truth about me. Thank you so much. I'm incredibly relieved. As I watched, I felt you were slipping farther and farther away from you, Giselle. It terrified me. Maybe it makes me a coward, or pitiful. But I was truly afraid of you coming to hate me. I would never hate you, Michelle. Ever. Thank you. We must leave this place. What? It would not be wise for us to remain here long. The air is still thick of darkness. But the front door won't open. Even if we could get out from somewhere, what would happen to us? We finally found each other again after so long. I want to share a quiet, modest life with you like before. What if that all disappears when we step outside? After all, we are... He doesn't finish, but I feel like I know what she was going to say. We're different now. She's stepped far outside the bounds of mortality, and the same could be said of me. I am. The man known as Michelle is long since dead. The mansion herself does not follow the rules of nature either. Rules of nature! And then run when the sun comes out. I don't know. I gotta stop doing that. Anyway. I keep seeing phrases in other games that remind me of other video games but anyway as beings no longer in possession of their proper forms stepping outside these walls could very well mean the end of us i can't say what my lay in store but we must return even though by staying here we could be together for all time i don't imagine that will be a very happy life there's no sun here no chirping birds no trees or breeze to rustle the leaves if we stay here, the nothingness will eat away at us. We have finally retained our old selves. We need to take action while we can. What if I say I want to stay here? And I'll drag you out. <laughs> it's almost like we switched places. Back then, it was you who wanted to stay. It's also kind of funny to hear you speak favorably of the outside, especially the sun. The words, that's all thanks to you, are on my lips, but before I can say them, I find myself hypnotized by her smile. That smile has picked me up so many times. She claims it's her only redeeming feature, but if she didn't have it, my life would have gone in a very 
different direction. I'm grateful to have gotten that back too. Say, um, we're in the middle of a very, uh, touching reunion, wouldn't you say? I suppose so, yes. And wouldn't you say there's a certain way of these things usually go? Huh? Are you really gonna make me say it? This is just pouting. I was, um, hoping you might perhaps kiss me. What? Nani? Eh? What? Oh, seriously, what? Where did all that bonus from a second ago go? What happened to all that momentum you were building? Uh, yeah, about that. I I think that might be more appropriate later. Later? How much later? I've been waiting for 900 years or something like that. After we find an exit, we're, you know, in a hurry. You're just making excuses because you don't want to. <laughs> I swear that's not it. It just so. Let's save that for when things aren't as crazy. Can't yeah, relax and enjoy it right now. What are you, 12? Oh, hush. All right, fine. But you better keep your word, got it? Promise. Let's go then. Let's find our way out of the mansion. There, our frozen time should be begin moving again. That's hopefully where our future awaits. It will be. No, we'll make it so. Yes, we will. If we leave the mansion, it should release our souls as well. Is that how it works? I mean, I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> All the magic thing. Well, probably only Morgana would know. But she's not doing anything for now anyway. And in doing so, she'll finally provide her deliverance. So I mustn't hesitate. To end all of this, for both of us, we must start again. This is where we... What? Darkness. It's a blackness purer than anything I've experienced in this house. Not a trace of light anywhere to be found. Why did I ever think the house would let us go so easily? Why did I ever think our time in the darkness was over? Michelle! Ugh. The darkness surges through the open door like a wave, flooding the observation tower. Like ivy growing widely to cover every last inch of every surface, consuming, defiling, eroding, our fingers slip apart, and concentrated rancor rains down upon us. Ah. How hideous a world this is. No, Michelle, please, please. Don't let go of my hand. Giselle. Michelle, I said I would never let her, her, let her go again. I said I would let get her out of this place. I swore I would, but as hard as I try to stretch, I can't reach her hand. Help, Michelle. I can't move. I can't move my body. <clears throat> I went out of my way to give you a beautiful tragedy. So why must you stubbornly insist on this ugliness? The more you struggle, my dears, the thicker and more palpable your filthiness becomes. Ah, it's sickening. Wouldn't you agree? She always spat her by over song-like cadence. Singing like a little girl, chirping like a morning bird, she celebrates misery. And she watches for the most worst possible moment to let out a cackle. Morgana! Okay, we see a little bit of Morgana, I guess. She has a uh, very long hair, it seems. I swear, you two are hopeless. I pity you. I give you my deepest condolences. Uh, let go. Let me go. Don't. Don't take me away from him. Cell. The darkness seeping into her grew deeper and thicker by the moment. And his black tendrils weren't just wrapped around her, but me as well. Stop this, Morgana. Let her... Let her go. <laughs> wow. Nothing more original. <laughs> My God, Morgana is such... I, I gotta love her. I don't know. She's such a troll. <sighs> I need a devoted puppet to protect this mansion for me. So I can't give her up. 
not even at your request. Besides, why should I give back something you threw away? Something you abandoned again and again. What are you talking about? You still haven't figured it out, my dear. Or are you just fading ignorance for your own convenience? You always did like to withhold anything that might prove disadvantageous. Disadvantageous. Michelle. Ugh. Giselle, give me your hand. Reach harder. Reach as hard as you can. Grab. Grab my hand. And I can't do it. It's like, it's like I'm tied up. I can't move at all. Ah. She's right there. If only I had like longer arms. Just turn into like rubber man or something. She waited so many hundreds of years for me. Finally managing to reclaim herself. And she's right there. So why can't my hand go any farther? Why can't I reach her wrist, her hand, or even a strand of her flowing hair? Why can't I get her back again? Michelle. Her voice is growing fainter, more distant. The darkness shrouds her, taking her away from me. Her arms, her fingers, the hands she led me with. Her smiling face. Her once glowing grin and how her now more modest smile. The witch's darkness is stealing every last bit of her. <laughs> Michelle. Help, help me, help. Nope. Oh, please, don't do this. Take me instead of her. Why does it have to be her? Why her? Organa. Why? Because your work is done, my dear. By all accounts, as the one who resurrected, resurrected me, you should have become my guy as well. But you let a single woman emotionally manipulate you, and you gave up on cursing others. And then you threw away your life, deluded into thinking you were protecting her. Organa, you already gave up the position once. Don't think you just walk up and ask for it back. Set her. Set yourself free. I'll do anything you ask. If you need a puppet, I'll be your puppet. If you want more from me, it's yours for the taking. But I can't leave her to remain in this cursed house any longer. You certainly have let your obsession with this girl take its toll on you. I much prefer the old pessimistic, cynical Michelle. It wasn't until I met Giselle that I truly became human. She made me to what I'm supposed to be. I can't lose her again. Is that so? Well... If call, you'll come to the harsh realization soon enough that everything you saw in her was just a facade. It was not. <laughs> All right, then. If you want her back so badly, you can have her. But exchange, I want you to entertain me. Will you endure maddening agony for me? Will you know pain enough to make you howl? Will you face despair again and again and again? If you need her that badly, you can bear anything, can't you? Uh, that's what you want from me. If that will allow her to see the sun once more. <laughs> Brilliant. Wait, Morgana! Morgana! As you wish, foolish boy. I was looking for a way to keep busy anyway. So I'll use you to kill some time. On your way to me, my dear. Find your way to me without going mad or succumbing to despair. And do hurry, or she might lose her mind again. Those memories you force her to relive. Those hundreds of years she spent locked away in her shell. All that fear that ate away at her. It's a bit much to have to reflect on with a clear mind. What'd you say? That's why I need to be there for her. Why I have to get her out of here. That's my obligation to her. You're the one who let her go of her hand, though. <laughs> you could put a broken cup back together, but the slightest tap in the wrong place will shatter it again. More Ghana! The witch's cackling fades into the distance. My outstretched hand is completely enveloped in the shadows. I can't even make out the faintest outline of it. And I can't tell if I'm sinking, floating, being pushed along some invisible stream, or falling with incredible speed. 
My eyes are open, but they can detect nothing. The complete lack of sound is almost painful. Nothing, anything, anywhere. Void. My consciousness begins to drift. Vague remnants of the feeling of her head and mind are my only link to reality. My one and only landmark. Giselle. I must get her back. She waited, enduring for hundreds, no, almost a thousand years. And now it's my turn to act. I have to hold that resolve, hold it firm, that I never forget her again. That I never lose myself again, even if I'm consumed by the darkness. You must never back down. You must never look away. You must never lose her. The house in Fata Morgana. The story behind the story. There's another one. There's another one. What? What do you mean? Okay. So there's even more? What do you mean the house behind... Or rather the story behind the story. We already went through the story behind the story. We're going through the story behind the story behind the story behind the story? This is getting... There's too many layers. But uh, I guess, you know, obviously it doesn't end there. It never ends, you know, in the happy note, by the way. I don't know, it's just like, it's all, something always bad always happens because of Morgana. Which I kind of love, by the way. You know, I kind of really like Morgana. She's a despicable villain. But like, I have a soft spot for the type of villain that is like fun to like watch, you know? Just ruin everybody's day and then laughing about it. I don't know. She has a very twisted sense of humor, but I kind of like her. I mean, obviously, I still don't want her to, you know, do the bad things, but I guess if she didn't, though, then there wouldn't be a story in the first place. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll see what happens with uh, Giselle and Michelle. I wonder if they'll actually reunite once again. I guess we'll find out, maybe.